Hello everyone and welcome to my new series called Sustainability in Construction or in the Building Industry, AEC, whatever you want to call it. I'm happy you're here. I hope together we can learn something about how to make our industry greener and better and overall more beautiful. I'm very excited. So let's jump into it. So why sustainability? So I could try and shock you now with some of the numbers that most of you have probably heard already about how much CO2 the production of cement or steel is contributing to our atmosphere or how much the construction sector contributes to the overall uh, waste production and how little of that is recyclable but rather than focusing on all of the negative status quo I would ra much rather look into solutions and uh, yeah look into what we can do about it and a good place to start is usually to look at the sustainable development goals um, the also called SDGs. So those are 17 goals that were published by the UN General Assembly in 2015 and they can be a good blueprint pl or like framework for setting up a sustainable development path for whatever you're doing whether it's a project or you're setting up a company or you're wanting to analyze a whole industry. So let's look into that so interestingly what you can see here is that it's not very much focused on decarbonization or reducing greenhouse gases because sustainable development is not just about climate change right it's about how can we live as a society in a way that everybody can fulfill their potential but also for the next futures to come like right like how can we have sustainable growth how can we have how can we all like thrive and have a have better lives so it is not focusing on like the individual contribution right the, the sustainable development goals are not about like oh you shouldn't like eat meat oh you need to separate your trash you shouldn't fly use the, like the plane to fly on holidays this is like minor stuff but the we are here now on a much higher level on instead of like blaming individuals more about like how do we as a society want to live so i think that's an an interesting point here to see because the way sustainability is defined is always as a triangle of ecological economical and social so you can't be fully sustainable for example by just focusing on two of them like being green and making money but you're hurting people then what you are proposing is not fully sustainable and uh, like won't lead to like long-term improvement of our ecosystem and of our society so these are of course very broad, right? So we have topics here ranging from no poverty to clean oceans. So depending on what project you have in your head, some of these might apply more than others. And um, so let's take a look at it with our construction perspective and see which ones are most generally relevant for our industry. So. Um, I'm seeing here renewable energy, of course, when we're talking about a new building or a new community, a new settlement, a part of a city, we always have to think about how to provide energy to the people living or working there. So um, part of that would also be then providing energy in renewable forms. 
whether that is solar, wind, hydro, etc. And then I'm seeing nine innovation and infrastructure, 11, probably the one that is most focused on the construction industry, sustainable cities and communities. But also, for example, number three, good health, right? That is also part of improving life is to make sure the buildings we live and breathe and work in aren't toxic, they aren't polluting the air. And the cool thing is that when you are looking at these things, like tweaking one thing might actually lead to improvements in some of these other categories as well. Like, for example, if we're thinking about renewable energy, if we're thinking about creating uh, energy from renewable sources, so for example, solar, right, we're also then can go like go away from fossil fuels, which are when burned, polluting the air. So that also leads to an improvement in the category 15, life on land, or number three, good health, right? And, or another example, if we're thinking about making more sustainable cities and maybe using less materials and construction that are not recyclable or created from finite resources if we're reducing that and uh, then we're also that would lead to less consumption so number 12 so you're seeing it's kind of once you start looking into it you see um yeah that it it's kind of connected so leading back to that triangle that we want to get to where we are not just focusing on either like economical benefits or social or environmental benefits but actually uh, trying to improve all three of them at the same time and what i'm learning in my masters right now is that like that's really possible like for example creating energy from photovoltaic is one of the cheapest sources of energy, actually much cheaper than creating energy from nuclear, for example. There's very little economical benefit to creating energy from, uh, from nuclear uh, power plants. So yes, but <laughs> I'm rambling. Uh, I actually maybe want to look into one of these SDGs um, more in detail and show you how they work. So the one I, I picked for that is number 11, because I think that applies most to the topics that we're in interested in. So sustainable cities and communities. So here I'm now on the website of the United Nations and we have those same goals that I talked about before. So if we hover over 11, we can see a little bit more of what is meant by that. So a little initial statement saying, make cities and human set settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So we're clicking on more info then. And uh, for every SDG, there's always these little infographics giving a bit more um, data. They try to like illustrate it um, in a way that is interesting. So for example, here, this is actually very up to date. We can learn some of the effects that the pandemic has had on settlements around the world, saying that it has uh, worsened the life of slum dwellers with now uh, 1 billion people. If you think about that, that's pretty crazy, right? From the uh, 7 billion people on this planet, that 1 billion people are living in slums. And that most of them are actually in these three regions. Um, only half of the world's urban population, so people living in cities, have convenient access to public transportation. So those are some illustrations on the topic. But as I said in the beginning today, we try to not focus too much on 
the negatives. I'm not trying to scare anyone away. So let's look at more of what we can do, right? So go to targets. And so for every one of these goals, there comes a list of target each with also with indicators. And those um, show what the UN has intended to reach by 2030. So all of these are part of the Agenda 2030. And I find it really inspiring to look through these. I can really recommend everybody to do so because I think it touches some topics that we don't always think about when we discuss the topic of sustainability. So for example, um, the first one being uh, to ensure for everybody access to adequate, safe and affordable housing, basic services and also to upgrade slums to, to reach that goal or provide safe, affordable, accessible and sustainable transport systems for everyone, improving road safety, um, but also giving special attention to those in vulnerable situations. So for example, women, children, person with disabilities and elder people. Um, enhance inclusive and sustainable urbanization. I think one number in that context is that 55% of the world's population are actually living in cities. So that's uh, a big part of it. That, so that's why we have why um, the topic on how we build urban settlements or how we improve the existing urban settlements is also such a big part of the sustainable development debate. But then, yeah, it also covers topics like protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. So, and I think, at least speaking for myself, I don't, I, it's easy to sometimes forget the kind of responsibilities you can carry as an architect or as an engineer, or as a project manager or as an urban planner. Like, so let, yeah, so with that being said, I think the SDGs are a good place to start when you want to look more into sustainable sustainability or you need a place where to start. And I actually have seen also uh, when I look at some companies doing their like yearly report, I think it's becoming more and more normal to include a section or a chapter on sustainability in your really yearly reports. So I can see uh, when I look at those, I can often see that they are using also the symbols of the SDGs as a um, guideline. So I hope I was able to spark your interest a little bit today. This was only a little introduction into the topic. I plan on making this a series and would love to talk about some more topics, maybe sometimes more niche, maybe sometimes broader, but yes, I'm <laughs> excited to be making videos again and I hope you're interested in watching them. Thank you.